Hi, in this video I'll be showing you how to implement split screen controls in Unity. We will be using the input system package, so make sure you import it. Here's how the system will work. Using Unity's player input manager, a lobby script is going to be listening for hardware input and creating new player instances from a prefab from each unique device. Each player will have their own controls, camera, unique color and UI. The controls will be handled by Unity's player input class, which requires an input action asset. In Unity, I have a simple environment that I have prepared beforehand, but an important thing to notice is there are currently no cameras rendering in this environment. That's because in this tutorial, I will just be using the player prefab cameras and just keeping it much much simpler. You can add your own cameras later and just disable them once a player connects or simply reassign an existing camera to a new player. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a player prefab from a capsule. So let's just call it player prefab. I'm going to recenter it and I'm going to go and put him above ground. Now that we have our little capsule guy, I'm going to create a camera for him. So I go game object camera. It's okay to call it camera and I'm just going to put it under the player prefab object. Now I'm just going to adjust the camera into the position where I like where it looks. So I think if we go 8 on the Y minus 16 on the Z and then add a 15 degree rotation to X, this looks pretty good. Okay, oh, and I'm just going to enable post-processing to make everything look better. I have set up the post-processing using the default volume profile beforehand. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a UI for this player. So let's go and create a canvas. I'm just going to call it UI. And I'm also going to drag it under the player prefab. The first thing I'm going to do with the UI is change the render mode from screen space overlay to screen space camera. I'm then going to select the camera that I have attached to the player and drag it right over here. And there we go, we have set up our UI for now. And we can simply just add a text that says ID label. And inside of it, we can just say player underscore hashtag, where hashtag is going to be the ID of our player. Now let's just simply position it on top of the screen. There we go. We can change the font as well. Much, much nicer. Let's bold it. Yeah, there we go. Looks much, much better. The next step is adding the player input component to our player prefab. So just search player input. There we go. And if you have not created the input actions beforehand, it, this is going to pop up. This is not a problem. I'm just going to click create actions. I'm going to save it to my assets folder in no particular folder. And I'm going to click save. Now, these are the default Unity actions. Uh, I'm just going to be using move for this tutorial. I'm not going to use look and fire, just so you know. Okay, now that this is changed, we can now drag the camera we have selected to the camera of the player input. There we go. The next thing we want to do is we're going to change the behavior from send messages to invoke Unity events. We are going to see what this does later. But for now, since we don't have any scripts, we're going to be leaving this alone. Once we have completed the player input portion of our player prefab, we can go ahead and save it. And the next thing we want to do is we want to create a lobby game object. This object will be holding our script, our component, that is going to be handling player inputs and then assigning player inputs and controllers to specific instances of our player prefabs. So now that we have our lobby script, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be adding the player input manager right over here. As you can see, now the notification behavior, we want to go again to invoke Unity events. We're going to be populating these later once we have our scripts, but for now we don't need to do anything. Now for the join behavior, this all depends on how you want to set it up. I'm just going to leave it by default. I'm going to click enable split screen and right over here, I'm going to drag the prefab into the player prefab object. Now, of course, I'm just going to put limit number of number of players and I'm going to put four just for testing purposes. And there we go. Now that we have set up our objects the way we need to set them up, it's time to write some C sharp scripts. We will be working on the lobby component first. Since this component depends on the player input manager component, let's make sure we always have it on our game object. We're going to go above the class definition and I'm going to type require component parentheses, type off, another set of parentheses, and player input manager. 
there we go now whenever we have a lobby component attached to something it's also automatically going to attach the player input manager component so let's create a variable definition inside of our lobby for the player input manager and let's fetch it in the awake method so as soon as this gets uh, set up it's going to get the input manager so input manager is equal to get component player input manager there we go another thing we need is an area of materials because we want each of our players to have a unique material just to make it a little more interesting so we go public material just so we can access it from the inspector and then we go materials there we go the next step is writing an on player join method that's going to accept a player input component which is an already instantiated player prefab and that's automatically done by the player input manager so the only thing we need to do is handle our custom game logic everything else from split screening to assigning devices to specific prefabs is automatically handled by unity so let's do that let's write a public void on player join and let's do a player input input variable there we go the first thing we want to do is we want to create a id for the player so let's go variable id is equal to and i'm simply going to use a incremental id system based on the number of players so i'm going to go input manager dot player count and i'm going to do minus one because i want my ids to start at zero the next thing i want to do is i want to fetch the actual player component or the actual player game object from the input system so i go variable player is equal to input not game object there we go next thing i want to do is i just want to simply position a player on a point on the map that's currently not occupied by another player and i'm just going to use that with the id so i go player dot transform dot position is equal to new and then i go id one because i want him to be on the floor not in the middle of it and then z on, zero on the z axis there we go now that we have this let's switch to our player component where we will have to write some code before we can continue working on our lobby component in our player component let's write the code in the chronological order it happens so the first thing that happens is a player gets set up in order to set up a player we are going to need an id and a material now we won't need to store the material because we're only going to access it once, once we set up the player. But for the ID, we want to store it in our class. So let's go in ID and let's create a public void setup method where we accept an ID and the material. There we go. So now once we call this method, we want to set this player's ID to the variable that we pass through. And the next thing we want to do is we want to get component mesh render. We want to get the mesh render component of the player and set the material to be the material that we pass through the function. Lastly, what we want to do is we want to display the label in our user interface that we've set up previously for each player. So I'm just going to create a reference for a text mesh pro label right over here. So TMP text, I'm going to call it ID label. And then right over here, I'm going to go id label dot text is equal to player underscore. And let's just add the id like that. And there we go. The next thing we want to do is we want to handle player movement. So let's go and write a public void on move. And in here, we're going to get a super specific parameter, which is going to be input action dot callback context and let's just call it context there we go in here i'm going to create a simple vector variable by reading the context dot read value vector 2 and then i'm going to set the uh, player's move input variable which i have not defined yet but i can do by doing it. so a new vector 3 movement variable let's call it move input now, why we do this instead of just using this variable? Well, because this is a vector 2 with x and y inputs, and we need to translate them in our case to x and z inputs. So what we go is we go move input.x is equal to x and move input.z 
is equal to v dot y. There we go. And since it's going to be a super simple controller just for show, I'm going to create the most basic movement script. Uh, I'm going to go in the update method and I'm going to say transform that translate speed, which we have defined previously right over here. So we go float speed, let's put it to 4.0 speed times time dot belt time times move input now of course you'd want to create a much more sophisticated movement script this is just the most simple the most basic one for showcasing now our player script is ready and we can go back to our lobby script in our lobby script in the on player join method we can now add the following line of code player dot get component we're going to get the player component that we've written and we are going to call the setup method on the player component. Now we're going to give it the ID we have generated previously. And to keep things simple, I'm just going to use the materials of ID to pass a specific material. Now all of our code is done and the only thing we need to do is hook up everything in the editor and see it in action. In Unity, let's set up our lobby component first. We go to our lobby game object, we search for the lobby component and add it. Currently, the only thing we need to set up with the actual component itself is the materials. So I'm just going to quickly log this window. I'm going to drag all of my materials right over here. And then I'm going to unlock this window. It's going to jump over here, but that's okay. Now, inside of the player input manager, we expand the events. We go on the on player joined event. We click the plus. We drag the lobby object right over here and under the lobby component you go on player demand under the dynamic player input. This is extremely important. If you haven't seen this over here then you have done something wrong. So it's important that it's a dynamic player input reference. So right over here and this is the only thing we need to do for the lobby. Everything else is handled by Unity itself. The next thing we want to do is set up the player component. So we go to our player prefab, we search for player, add the component. Now we just reference the ID label from our user interface. And the next thing we want to do is we want to expand the player input component, go to events, you go to player, under move, we drag and drop the player component, go to the player, and of course, again, dynamic callback context, on move and this is it so we can right now see how it works i have a xbox 360 joystick oh actually before we do anything else we first have to override all of the changes that we've made to the player prefab right over here and then we can delete the prefab from the screen so right now let's go and test and see how it works okay so i'm going to go to play maximized i'm going to click play now there's nothing happening. I'm going to click, let's say W on my keyboard. And there we go, we have one player. I can freely move around, the camera's following me. It says player zero on the top of the screen. So what happens if I press a button on my controller? And there we go, now we have another player on the screen. I'm moving it using my controller. And the left side, the blue guy is moved using my keyboard. And that would be all for this tutorial. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I hope you have a nice day. Bye-bye.